Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create liquid metal text effects in Photoshop using nothing but layer styles. So a couple of assumptions I need to get out of the way before we begin. Number one, I'm using Photoshop CC 2017. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Number two, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's begin by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up our new image dialog box. And let's name our new image liquid metal text. Now the width that we're using is 3,840 pixels. The height is gonna be 2,160 pixels. Resolution of 150 pixels per inch. RGB color 8-bit. The background should be white. So click on the little square and make sure it's all Fs or just drag up here to the upper left for white. Then you wanna go down to uh, the, the color profile is Adobe RGB 1998 and the pixel aspect ratio is square pixels. Once you've got all of that, hit create. You've got a brand new image that you can begin working on. First thing to do once you've done that is, is make your foreground and background black and white, the default black and white. And you do that by hitting D on the keyboard or by going over here to your tools palette and clicking on the little black and white icon you see there. That will change your foreground and background color to black and white respectively. Now that we have black and white as our foreground and background, we're going to uh, make sure that our background here is selected and we're going to double click on the name which will also unlock the layer, okay? And we will rename the layer as brushed metal. Okay, we don't have to do anything else. Brushed metal is all we need. Hit okay and you'll see that it is now unlocked and now has the name brushed metal. Now I'm doing this just so that we have something to put our text on, it's not necessary. You can skip ahead if all you want is the liquid metal text. But here's how you make brushed metal for your background. Now uh, you go up here to filter and you go to noise, add noise, and what you want is you want an amount of 20, you want it to be Gaussian, and you want it to be monochromatic. Hit OK and you now have this kind of noisy whitish and gray background. The next thing that you need to do is go up to filter, go to uh, blur, and then go to motion blur. Then you want an angle of about 35. You can use different angles depending on uh, how you want your brush metal to look. Some people like it to be uh, completely vertical or completely horizontal or at a, uh, a complete 45 degree angle. I like 35 because it's slightly off from 45 and gives the image a little bit more uh, of a realistic look, at least in my eye. Uh, so once you have the angle that you like, that's fine, but the distance that you need is gonna be about 190 pixels. Now you can go a little higher or a little lower depending on how much uh, of the brushing that you want to be able to see, but 190 gives you a very nice look at this resolution. Once you have that, hit OK. Then the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna make this a little bit bigger because if you look on the edges here, you'll see that the blur kind of ends at the edges. So you wanna hit Control T on the keyboard to bring up your transform box, grab an outside corner like this, hold down Shift and Alt and click and then drag out. Shift and Alt will keep your, uh, your uh, transformed object at its own ratio. So just pull it out until all of the non-blurred parts are gone, then hit enter on the keyboard to accept that change, and we now have the beginnings of our brushed metal background, but they're a little light. So the way that we're gonna fix that is we are going to put on a layer adjustment, uh, and we're going to make it a uh, levels adjustment. So we put a levels adjustment layer above our brushed metal. And what we're gonna do is right here on the black side, you can just type it in right over here. We're gonna make this about 200. And I say about 200 because it depends on the, uh, the amount of noise that you've put on. That's how much you need to move the black slider from the left here. So I say about 200 because you might want it darker, you might want it lighter, I don't know. I happen to like 200. So start with 200, see what you like, move it around, see if you like where it is. If you do, great. If you don't, move it to where you like it and move on from there. Once you have a levels adjustment that you like, what we want to do 
is we want to then create a curves adjustment layer above our levels adjustment. So you're gonna go down here to our curves adjustment layer right here, click on that, and what we're going to do is we're gonna make this much, much, much darker by grabbing the upper right hand side over here under our curves adjustment layer options or properties, and we're gonna drag it all the way down to about the bottom most black line. Once we've done that, you're gonna click on this little icon next to curves, which is your masks for the curves adjustment layer. And then we're gonna go down here to feather, and we're gonna change this to 175. Now what that does is that means whenever you make a selection using your marquee or the lasso tool, it's going to feather that selection by 175 pixels. So you no longer have to feather your actual uh, marquee or your selection using the feather option in the options of that tool. You can do it right here under the mask and then you don't have to worry about it later. I'll show you what I mean. Make sure that you have your mask selected in your, lay in your curves layer right here. Then go up here to your, uh, your marquee, uh, rectangular marquee selection tool. You can hit M on the keyboard to get there the same way. Once you have that, you can just make a nice big selection here. This is where we'll put our text, okay? Once you've got a nice big selection, you're going to grab it and move it until it is in the center like so. Let go. Then all that we wanna do is you wanna hit Control and Backspace. What that does is it fills it with black on the layer mask, which makes it transparent. And as you can see, now we can see the actual uh, brushed metal far better than we could when it was darker. It also make, gives us a very good area to write our text that makes it stand out from the background. All of that, this whole exercise right here of creating the brushed metal is just to give us something to put our text on. If you already have some place that you want the text to sit on, you could skip all of this and just start right from here where we're going to start creating the text. Now, the font that I'm using, I have a link in the description below, it's called Roundy Rainbows. You can download it for free and use it. Uh, that's all good. You can use any font you want, but I would suggest that this particular effect works best with fonts that are thicker and that have rounded edges that kind of look like uh, balloons or, or don't have sharp angles to them. And that's because it's supposed to be liquid metal and liquid metal should have rounded edges to it rather than straight edges. But again, use it any way that you want. So with that out of the way, let's get uh, down to creating our characters. Now I've got it set up for roundy rainbows. The font size that I'm using is 323 points. Nothing else really matters. Just make sure that your uh, horizontal and vertical sizing is 100%. Color doesn't matter uh, because we're gonna be changing that using layer styles. So now that we've got all of that, we're gonna go to our text tool by hitting T on the keyboard. Okay, make sure that we're using sharp uh, and centered. We're gonna go to the center of our document, click, and then we're gonna hit pixel magic. Now I'm using all caps. You can use caps and lowercase, doesn't make a difference, however you'd like it. Once you have it where you want it, oh, uh, and one more thing that we wanna do that I always tell people, free fonts you can get on the web and also most paid for fonts have fairly poor kerning between the letters. So what you wanna do is make sure that the kerning between the letters, that means the space between the letters, is uh, good looking to your eye. For example, the A here is next to the M, fairly close, but it's pretty far away comparatively to the G. And uh, looking over here, the X and the E are pretty far away, but the X and the I aren't. So what you wanna do is clean that all up. And the way that you do that is you put your cursor between the letters that you wanna change, and then you hold down the Alt key and you use your left and right arrow keys to move things closer and further apart. So for example, the P and the I, I will move over once, then I'm letting go of Alt, then I can hit the right arrow key on my keyboard, and then I can hold down Alt again and move the I closer to the X, like so. Then I can move over one by letting go of the Alt and clicking the right arrow, and you get the idea. So let's clean this all up by moving things a little bit closer together, uh, which I think will look better for this effect. Yes, uh, that's a little too close. 
and that looks good to me. Once you have the text the way that you want it to look, click on the little check mark up here that will accept your changes. Then let's go back to our move tool by hitting V on the keyboard. Let's grab our text and let's move it to the center of our uh, newly laid out little bright area of our background. Now that we have that, all we have left is the layer style that we will apply to this text to make it look like liquid metal. So let's get started with that by going down to our layer styles, hitting bevel and emboss, and getting started. So let me move this up so that we can see a little bit better. There we go. So uh, for bevel and emboss, what we want is a inner, inner bevel style, technique of smooth, depth is gonna be 120%, direction is up, size is gonna be 98 pixels, soften is zero. The angle that we want, and remember, always uncheck use global light. It's almost useless, usually, unless you're working on a large project where everything has to have light from the exact same angle, which almost never happens. So uncheck use global light. Then what you want is your angle to be 135 degrees, your altitude to be 60 degrees. The gloss contour is kind of different. It's called ring triple. And the way that you can get ring triple and all these other added little bonus uh, contours is go up here to the sprocket and you want to go down to contours. Once you have that, you want to replace the current contours with the contours from contours, which makes no sense because you've got three different ways of saying contours. Hit OK and then it will all be replaced with all of these cool new contours, not the normal eight or so that it comes with normally. So once you have done that, you want to go down here to this three spiked guy right here, and that will be ring triple. Click on that and you have what you need. Anti-alias is unchecked. Then for highlight mode, we want linear dodge add. The color that we're using is C7, C7, C7. Okay. And uh, you want it to be 100% opaque. Shadow mode is linear burn. The color that we're using is black, which is all zeros. Then you want the opacity to be 60%. Next thing that we want is we want to start with contour here, which will give it uh, a pretty cool looking effect there. The contour that we're using is going to be this cone inverted. That's what we're using. Anti-alias is checked and range is 100%. The next thing that we're going to use is we're going to use inner shadow, but we're going to use two inner shadows, okay? And the way that you make a second inner shadow, at least in uh, Photoshop CC 2015 and later, is you click on the little plus icon here after you're done with your first shadow. Then it will create a second shadow. You select the bottom most one and you work on your second shadow. So here's inner shadow right here, our first one. The blend mode is going to be vivid light. The color that we're using is D, E, E, D, E, D. Okay, the opacity is 50%. Angle is going to be 134 degrees. Distance is going to be 20 pixels. Choke is 3 pixels or 3%. Size is going to be 18 pixels. The contour that we're using here is going to be uh, Gaussian right here. Uh, Anti-alias is unchecked, noise is going to be 10%. Inner shadow number two is pretty similar. Uh, it's going to be a blend mode of multiply though. Color is going to be black, that's all zeros. Uh, opacity is going to be 57%. Angle is a negative 45 degrees. Use global light, again, unchecked, always uncheck it. Distance is going to be 21 pixels. Choke is going to be only 1%. Size is going to be 16 pixels. Contour is going to be linear, which is the default contour, or the very first one. Anti-alias is unchecked. Noise is going to be 4%. Then what we need to do is we need to go to Inner Glow. So you want to click on Inner Glow here, and the blend mode that we're using is Multiply. Opacity is going to be 70%. Noise is going to be 7%. The color that we're using is a very nice gray of 9E, 9E, 9E. Uh, then what we want is the technique to be softer. Source is going to be edge. Choke is going to be 0%. Size is 32 pixels. Contour that we're using is going to be over here, which is Cove Shallow. The anti-alias is unchecked. Range is going to be 60%. Jitter is 0. Next up after our inner glow is going to be a color overlay. So we don't want it to be the color that we started with, which in my case was black. We want it to be more of a whitish kind of gray. So the blend mode that we're using is going to be normal, and the color that we're using is DF, 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 which is a very light gray, and opacity is going to be 100%. You can already see it's beginning to look more like liquid metal. Let's make it look even more like liquid metal by giving it a slight outer glow. 
we're going to use a blend mode of hard light. Opacity is going to be 25%. Noise is going to be 0%. The color that we're using is a very slight whitish blue. Uh, e F E uh, E4, sorry, it's E4 EFF1. Hit OK. And the technique is softer. Spread is going to be 0%. Size is 15%. The contour that we're using is called ring. So you just want to find this guy right here, which is ring. Uh, Anti-alias is off. Range is 50%. Jitter is 10%. The jitter is there to give it a slight kind of a um, dissolved look or, or pixelated look at the edges of the uh, outer glow. That's all that that's there for. Jitter is kind of like giving uh, this effect a dissolve look, which we don't want to do because we don't want the whole thing to be dissolved, just the very edges of it. Okay, then we need two drop shadows on this. The first drop shadow is going to be a blend mode of multiply. The color is going to be black, of course. Opacity is 100%. Angle is going to be 135 degrees. Again, use global light unchecked, always unchecked. Distance is going to be 26 pixels. Spread, 7%. Size, 46. Six. Contour is linear, which is the very first default. Anti-alias is unchecked and noise is only 2%. Layer knocks out drop shadow is checked. Then we want to go to our second drop shadow, which is multiply black. Uh, opacity is going to be 44%. Angle again, 135. Make sure I use global light is unchecked. Distance is 29. Spread zero. Size 32. Contour here is going to be uh, I believe this is Peaks 1 or, or something like that. Hold on. Uh, it is Sawtooth 1. Sawtooth 1. Uh, Anti-aliased is unchecked. Noise is 0%. Later knocks out drop shadow is unchecked. And we now have our liquid metal text effect in Photoshop using only layer styles. So this is still fully editable. So if I go to text, I can then select. I can change anything that I want, so forth and so on. We're all good. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. This is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.